Well, when it comes to the faceless threat of cyber terror, American hypocrisy rings loud and clear. Recently, the U.S. government has been ramping up fear about cyber terrorism, saying that cyber warfare will soon be the biggest threat facing the U.S. In recent documents, they say that cyber attacks will be viewed by America as an act of war, which could warrant retaliatory military force. But while Congress introduces countless numbers of security measures to prevent attacks, the government's attacking other countries. It's now confirmed that the U.S., working in concert with Israel, created Stuxnet, the computer virus that was used to infect Iran's nuclear enrichment programs. So what precedent does this set for the rest of the world? And will engaging in cyber warfare put America at risk? Trevor Tim, activist with the Electronic Frontier Foundation, joins me now. Tim, what do you think about this hypocritical rhetoric coming from the White House saying that, you know, if, if someone engages in, a, in an act of cyber war, then we can retaliate with military force. And at the same time, uh, here it comes out that they, you know, in concert worked with Israel. Right. This could have huge implications going forward, uh, not just in the U.S., but with other countries. Um, you know, as you said, the Pentagon said a year ago that a cyber war attack on the U.S. could be looked at as a real act of war, and the U.S. could actually retaliate with, with real weapons. And now we find out last week from the New York Times that the, the U.S. government is actually engaged in cyber attacks against Iran. And President Obama, according to the New York Times, has been acutely aware of this situation, where we're setting precedent for other nations. Um, and that's where the real problem lies, because we've been criticizing China for allegedly attacking United States companies and U.S. governments, while at the same time engaging in the, in the, in the same conduct with other countries. And so this could open up a huge new can of worms. And as the New York Times pointed out, this is a similar situation the U.S. faced in the 1940s when it was developing an atomic bomb. Uh, it's really important that we set guidelines and limits to how we act and react in, in these situations because it could have huge effects in the future. Trevor, what do you think about the ramping up of cyber terrorism as this giant threat? I mean, we saw Robert Mueller come out and say that it's going to be surpassed terrorism as the number one threat facing the nation. And then here it comes out that they're engaging in it all along across these na uh, to these other nations. What do you think about them using this threat against our nation to pass legislation like CISPA? Yes, they have been engaged in fear-mongering to pass CISPA, which unfortunately doesn't even really address the cybersecurity issue. Uh, the, problem, the, the problems with CISPA um, are it just addresses information sharing. So it lets companies and governments share huge amounts of information with each other, which could lead to companies giving your personal information, your communications to the government without a warrant, which current privacy law now prevents. And so CISPA kind of carves a giant hole into this. Um, and that's not even really attacking the problem. Um, so if we take Stuxnet for an example, they used four zero-day exploits in Stuxnet. Zero-day exploits are essentially vulnerabilities in software uh, that allow attackers to get into a system and take your information. Well, when governments have these, other people have them too. And there's a huge underground market for these zero-day exploits, which are being sold to governments all around the world for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, it should be the U.S. policy where if they find out about a zero-day exploit, that they, I, that they tell a company immediately, they tell a browser that their, um, their system is vulnerable, and they can fix it and make us all safe. Uh, unfortunately, when they keep them to themselves, we're all less safe. Do you think that this could be a possibility that they're trying to create a cyber retaliatory attack against this country so then they can justify passing these bills by doing this covert warfare against Iran? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. I think that, um, you know, there's plenty of evidence that, that cyber attacks are already happening uh, against the U.S. as well. I mean, not to say that this isn't uh, a, an invisible, that they're completely making up this threat. Uh, what I'm saying is that the laws that they're trying to pass would invade people's privacy and, you know, wouldn't accomplish the goals they even want to accomplish. Uh, they are using as an as a they are using it as an excuse to, uh, you know, s like lessen privacy laws. Uh, but actually, Google came out the other day and said that they were going to start uh, telling users when they think that they, they're being hit with a state-sponsored attack. And we've already seen Google issue warnings to individual users in the last day or two, um, including national security reporters and even uh, uh, it, uh, Obama re-election campaign members saying that their Gmail accounts were attempted to be hacked by a state-sponsored 
um, state-sponsored hackers. So we know it's a problem, but the way that they're going about attacking it uh, and their uh, hypocrisy in actually doing it themselves uh, is really where the, the real issue lies. Trevor, what do you think about just our surrounding Iran on all sides with our military and also just the saber rattling and going along with also the taking out of nuclear scientists, that explosion that was suspected to be from Stuxnet that killed multiple people there? I mean, it just seems like we're just saber rattling them, waiting for them to strike. What, what do you think about that? Uh, well, I mean, I th the, Stuxnet, uh, the Stuxnet virus, how it worked was it... it um, Overwhelmed their centrifuges in their nuclear facilities, and the the explosions, uh, the the whatever damage it caused, Stuxnet wasn't involved in any of the explosions that killed Iranian scientists. That's a um, completely separate issue, um, where scientists have been found dead um, by targeted assassination. It seems like uh, the I mean the real problem is that you know we're trying to negotiate with Iran right now to get them to stop their nuclear program, but at the same time, we're engaged in these covert activities, which when um, Iran finds out about them, obviously they're going to be upset and it could end up backfiring on us completely, where, um, you know, we could make progress in negotiations using diplomacy, but where um, they end up realizing that the U.S. is attacking them uh, via cyber warfare and could end up, um, you know, ending the negotiations, essentially. Well, I guess that's the real question is why why is the White House saying publicly that we're trying to negotiate them with with them peacefully about their nuclear program, you know, the sanctions and all this, um, but at the same time actually engaging in warfare and making these acts against their facilities. Thanks so much for coming on and sharing your opinion. That was Trevor Tim, activist with the Electronic Frontier Foundation.